We'll start now. So, uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to my presentation and VR demonstration at the EdTech Festival in 2021. My name is Florian Kern, and I'm working for the Chair of Human Computer Interaction in Würzburg. Our chair is led by Professor Dr. Mark Erich Latoschik with an expertise over 25 years in the HCI field. With four professors, 46 employees and 19 student workers, the HCI group has grown strongly in the past years. Therefore, we could focus on a wide range of research topics, including perceptual computing, virtual, mixed and augmented reality, and artificial intelligence. Our application areas are avatars, agent, roboters, social interaction, training, e-learning, therapy, multimodal interfaces, games and gamification, and digital heritage. Uh, as part of the XR Hub Bavaria, we would like to strengthen Bavaria as a media and business location for extended reality XR. The XR Hub is located in Würzburg, Munich and Nuremberg and is funded by the Bavarian State Ministry of Digital Affairs. But in the next three days, we are discussing about education technology which can be defined as education technology is the study and ethical practice of facilitating learning and improving performance by creating, using, and managing appropriate technological processes and resources. The WeLearn project is a great example in terms of creating, using, and managing processes and resources. And WeLearn stands for virtual situated learning and teaching with avatars and agents in social cyberspace. The project is a cooperation between the Chair for School Pedagogy and is funded by the Ministry for Education and Research. The WeLearn project is based on earlier work of Breaking Bad Behavior, an immersive virtual reality system for training classroom management skills. Breaking Bad Behavior is developed also in close cooperation with the Chair for School Pedagogy and is used as a companion tool for primary and secondary student teachers. So we learn. WeLearn especially explores situated collaborative virtual learning environments based on presence and social interactions using VR and AR. The goal is the promotion of competences and the increase of learning success with special consideration of availability, participation and inclusion. We learn researches and develops the necessary basic technologies in close interdisciplinary cooperation between the chair for human computer interaction and as I already mentioned the chair for school pedagogy led by professor dr silke grafe in this project we are combining innovative media didactic principles as an interactive and collaborative process using digital media with current techniques of VR and AR. Uh, I will give you now some technical insights. The software application, as you see on the screenshots, um, is developed with the Unity game engine. We are combining self-developed open source components with well-known evaluated and established commercial products. With this, we are able to provide a social XR platform for teachers and learners, which can be used independently of their physical working place. In the past, we conducted several VR presentations, demonstrations and seminars in VLearn. For example, in this semester, we are conducting tomorrow, next time, a school pedagogy seminar where students are equipped 
with an Oculus Rift S head-mounted display, VR glass, and high-end VR laptops. Each Wednesday, next tomorrow, students connect independently to the VLearn application and perform a collaborative VR seminar from home. To make this possible, students were, were instructed by written documents and videos how to use a VR device and how to download the application. For the VLearn application itself, we provide an interactive VR tutorial explaining available features within the user's private space. When problems are appearing, the students try to solve them at first by themselves and uh, afterwards can contact the IT support, which is provided by student workers already familiar with the application. So now we are already at my VR session. Um, instead of showing a polished uh, video of our application, we uh, now dive directly into VR to give you um, a better impression of our application when it is used live. I will use an HP Reverb G2 head mounted display. It's this one. It's an Windows mixed reality device. And uh, yeah, I will give you a VR live demonstration. If you have a, a desktop based VR device at home, feel free to join my seminar. You could download the application under the shown link. Uh, download. And the seminar room is attack minus seminar minus demo. Okay, now I need a few seconds and I will st stop the screen share and instead I'm just getting a push message from the screen uh, from the sh and sharing the whole screen. Okay, preview. Um, as we do this uh, many times in Zoom, I uh, shared my screen over Zoom. It's much easier for me. And now I will um, go to the computer, which is next to me, and start the application. As you can see, the application is already downloaded and extracted. I will open two windows, one window from a perspective of an observer and one window for me in VR. Um, as you can see, you can choose different forms of participation as an observer, desktop, and several VR devices. I will now press on Beobachter, which is observer, and Teilnehmer. And now I will create a room, which is called attack minus uh, <laughs> uh, we learn minus demo, there will be only one room. And I will start the application. Okay, now um, I switch over to our main station as you already saw in the presentation. I will now open the second screen and also the Windows Mixed Reality Portal. This is the critical moment <laughs> where the device hopefully works. So let me see. Okay, and activate it. Look around to activate the system. Look down. Okay, great. That was the first step. Now I activate the VR controllers, really similar to the Oculus one. And they are visible. Okay, great. That was the first step. And now I start the VLearn application. Like select reverb. I um, join as moderator and we provide different types of avatars, um, which is not included in this presentation, but I will show you quickly an overview. So first we have stylized ones, uh, male and female, and also photorealistic ones. That's me. So we have an embodiment lab at our chair where we can scan with 100 cameras people and make them digital uh, so you can be yourself in our application that's my professor uh, professor dr selfie grafe my colleague and so on we also provide robot avatars 
for androgen avatar embodiment. But now I stick back to stylized one and I'm working on black shirt, that's fine. And joining our demo room. The connection of this application right now is over the internet. So the server is hosted at our uh, Rechenzentrum in Würzburg. And decrease the size. Okay, now I will go into the other. If you cannot see me, please um, give me a hint or something. But I think it should be fine. So now I'm in VR. Here are my hands. And our application starts within, this is my private room, as you can see. And this is our introduction. So we help the user to get familiar with the system by our VR tutorial. So you can point on it with your finger and now it starts. This text is also audible um, to the people. So you can, I will quickly go through the tutorial and now I can also see my avatar. Oh, ground is a bit too high, but well, <laughs> no problem. Uh, I can uh, see myself and if I'm reading, uh, if I'm talking, you see this um, bubble and now I will skip the tutorial and go directly in our social room. Now I can meet with others, unfortunately, <laughs> no one is here, but that's okay. And yeah, that's our main station. I'm at the moment as a moderator connected to the system. So um, here's a screen behind me. You can see the same presentation here. You can see uh, a mirror at the wall because we found out that it's really important that you have an overview of the whole room. And that's a bit of a problem with the R because the field of view is really restricted. So we added a mirror to the back and that helps a lot, which so this setup is uh, used for example tomorrow. Okay, so how to use our application? We are strongly focusing on digital content creation. Um, every room is designed like this room and you have this wristband here, left and right. And you control your whole application with the wristband. Like I can op uh, uh, open my tablet. This is my tablet, my control unit. And you can interact with the tablet by a laser pointer and by directly clicking on it. And because it's important to don't miss anything, I will open the presentation, which I showed you before and switch to the next page. Here. Yeah, great. So uh, to not forget anything. So here, the lobby, private room, social room, interaction with the tablet. Okay, next point. So you can interact with the tablet. Oh, not here. Uh, you can uh, use the laser pointer, the finger, the, the stylus. Um, I will show you later. Excalibur draw, count on presentation sharing. Okay, next step is the presentation sharing. You can share your presentation. Instead of uh, implementing uh, pixel-based sharing, we for now, use an optimized one where we can provide a very, very low bandwidth due to the possibility of a bad connection of our students. I can share the presentation and as you can see, the presentation is now visible behind me and also here. And I can now go to the next slide or go to the previous slide. And yeah, well, I could now also switch to a different tab. So I will now open Excalidraw. Excalidraw is a collaborative platform for VR, uh, for, for note taking. And uh, I can now write here. So I can click on the pen, but for now I don't want to write with my finger. I want to activate the stylus. And if you check it, I'm standing forward. Oh, sorry, <laughs> um, this is much better. So, I'm now holding the controller upside down. You maybe saw this in Horizon Workrooms from Facebook announced one month ago. Uh, I have to say we did this one year ago, but ah, yes, <laughs> only as a comment. So now I can hold it like a pen and write things like, it's a bit lagging, sorry. Oh, <laughs> um, I think. Okay, I think the screen share is a bit of a problem for my computer at the moment. 
and yeah, but but that uh, it's lagging. Uh, yeah, but you can also write. So there's an example. You can also write with your finger. Okay, great. And yeah, what you can also do is you can switch to different rooms. So we are providing breakout rooms because that's really important for our sessions, or real world sessions. So you can go to the first breakout room. That's A. That's B. That's C. D. And coming back to the main room, you can also start the timer, which is now visible in every room. And you can, of course, uh, start 3D tasks, like, for example, this mind map where uh, students can uh, do tasks like sorting things, grabbing things, and so on. Uh, yeah, and the last thing is um, it's important for us to take notes. So you can use your keyboard here. And you can also do uh, voice memos. I can press here and now. I'm not, the microphone is muted to everyone else. You can also see this red circle here. And now I can record voice memos, uh, and which is saved to my local disk. And yeah, so you can do your notes by your stylus or your finger by writing. You can do it by typing on the keyboard, which is the slowest way. And you can also do voice memos. OK. Um, that was it. Uh, I will now go back to the reality. Ooh. <laughs> uh, okay. I will now. You should now see my presentation again. And yeah. That's my application slide. Uh, yes, OK. So thank you very much for following my VR demonstration. The VLearn application will be extended and improved continuously. This is also supported by our growing partnerships with internal and external universities. If you are also interested in our application, we are happy to hear from you. If we are coming back to the features of VLearn, which I presented previously, it is noticeable that many other projects share the same requirements. Therefore, we started to conceptualize and develop the reality stack. The reality stack is, um, uh, is created to use synergies of our projects and provide reusable and extendable software components. Great examples for this are the embodiment component and the network component. Therefore, the reality stack will help us to understand concepts, recognize synergies, and to quickly provide new software application with varying features. OK, now, uh, in this talk, I presented to you the VLearn application which I developed at our chair in close cooperation with the chair for school pedagogy and other internal projects and external partners. Second, I did a live demo, a live VR demonstration showing features for digital content creation and collaborative knowledge work in VR. Lastly, I put this into the context of the reality stack and now happy to start the discussion with you. As a side note, this presentation was created with the e-authoring tool DECA. Get in touch with Samantha Monti at 11.15 and her presentation. Again, thank you very much for your attention. OK, so uh, you could, thank you. You could now ask uh, your questions verbally or by the question and answer. And yeah, feel free. And yes. Florian, you will already find some questions in the chat. If you have okay. a look, there are yes. already some questions for you to answer. Oh, I'm sorry. It's very small. I think you were talking about the VR demonstration. In, um, in, in, in my presentation, uh, you could also see um, uh, a video showing the features in a larger scale. Um, okay, Christoph, 
Hi, Christoph. Um, I had a question. Uh, slightly not resizing. Thank you. A full screen option. Okay. Um, I'm very sorry for the presentation um, that it was a bit small. Um, yeah, the presentation is also upload, uh, up uploaded. Um, yeah, if you have any question, uh, yeah, I can also help you afterwards. So uh, one question from Juliana Hartig. How long does it take to get familiar with the technology, hitting the small buttons, etc.? cetera? Uh, we found out that um, people, so our people are student teachers. So students becoming teachers in the future, and it's really straightforward. Um, I think the it's it's um, as at the moment when we switch to really pressing buttons at your wristband and with your finger, it's really intuitive and it feels like using a, a tablet or something. Um, and it's not that small in VR; it's much bigger, um, so you can press it uh, really, really good. Um, and the biggest, let me think, I th the the biggest um, problem or um, is that VR technology like connecting the computer, um, starting the VR device, activating the controllers, changing batteries, so more like the pre steps to get in touch with or to to get uh, which you have to do previously are uh, bigger problems, I think. Um, oh, great, Christoph, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, that would be first. We are working on VR, AI, XR and connecting with 5G. And for me, it was a little bit difficult to handle the menus. Okay. Is the tool license based? What's about the cost? Okay, so as I mentioned in the presentation, half of the system is open source and half of the system we are using commercial plugins. So um, we are using plugins from the Unity Asset Store uh, for different components like most, or I would say any application developed with WeLearn using a commercial web browser, um, which is working pretty, pretty well. And you have to integrate it by yourself. If you want to use the application, if you have this plugins bought, you could contact us and we can, um, I think we can provide you a copy also uh, from the source code, but at this, we never thought about this. Uh, we have to, we have to talk internal. Um, let me think the license, uh, right now, if we provide a build, that's fine for unity. So if you only want to use the application as it is, you could contact us and we will provide you a packaged version, which you can use out of the box, like any other application. Do you have problems with latency? Um, of course, uh, there's latency in the internet. But um, as when you are not located in the same room, um, I, um, it's, it, it, it's difficult to recognize the latency as everything in our system has the same delay. That's the internet part. It's like in every computer game, and right now, at my computer, I think here, um, I'm in my uh, home with 200 megabits connected to our server at the Rechenzentrum within 10 uh, gigabit connection uh, directly to the internet uh, node. Uh, I think it's 20 milliseconds. Uh, so, it's, so it's quite good, especially we don't have a server side game engine running. We are using a backend, which is purely socket based, which means that um, that you don't have to provide uh, a running version of of a, a game server site and sorry a game engine server. It's simply a socket um, exchanging the data. Um, between our project, yes, um, uh, Juliana, it would be great. Uh, we can set up a meeting in the next weeks. And yeah, that, that would be super nice. Yeah, of course, we should definitely use synergies. Uh, we have a lot of but I will contact you afterwards. Okay, I think I answered all the questions at the moment. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, be free to activate your camera if that is possible or write in the chat. Um, yes.
So thank you to you, Florian. It was a really nice presentation. And um, 